if you're new to the world of Vedic astrology, it's pretty profound. <laughs> if you're not new to the world of Vedic astrology, well, it's still pretty profound. What's the difference between those two things? Well, when you're new to the world of Vedic astrology, it can sometimes be a little bit overwhelming and profound, but there's no need to fear right? I'm not just here to talk to you today about how Vedic astrology can be profound and or anything like that. I'm here to talk to you about the concept of success and prosperity in your horoscope and the particular divisional charts, as they're called, which point in that specific direction. So why am I going into all of this overwhelming and profound stuff? Because when you first go in and you look uh, at the newness of Vedic astrology and you see that we have a chart for pretty much every single aspect of life, yeah, it can be a little bit overwhelming to say the least. So I want to talk to you today about a few specific uh, divisional charts uh, they're called Vargas in uh, Vedic astrology. And please pardon me for looking away. I'm moving things around the screen. I'll try to stay focused on you by looking at the camera. Um, but we're going to talk today about the D10 or the Dashamsha chart, the D2, or it's also called the Hora chart, and the D4, which is also called the Chatratamsha chart. The reason I'm going into this is there are a couple of very specific things that many people from either a Western astrology perspective or a Vedic astrology perspective uh, understand that relate to the concepts of karma. And those are the South Node and the North Node, respectively, or as we call them in Vedic astrology, Ketu and Rahu. These represent the karmic patterns in the horoscope. Uh, Ketu tends to show us the side of the spectrum that we're familiar with, that perhaps we've done previously, that we understand, but we're in need of further development and we're needing to break away from those patterns. Rahu's job is to pull us away from that, right? Rahu being the North Node, its job is to pull us away from those patterns that we've done previously and make us explore new territory, which is sometimes a little bit scary, sometimes a little bit freaky, and sometimes a little bit topsy-turvy, and force us to bring it back to the comfort and familiarity of the South Node, K2, so that we can integrate grow, evolve, and ultimately become liberated from our previous patterns. So bringing this back to the concepts of success and prosperity, which by the way, I have a four consultation plan that's on special offer for you right now. You get four astrological consultations that are focused specifically on success, purpose, and prosperity by first helping you to tune in and understand your natural inherent gifts so that you can manifest them to the world. And next, to help you to take a look at your patterns, which you may have around success and prosperity, and the fourth session to help you to plan your path ahead. So we're going to talk about just briefly those karmic patterns around success and prosperity today and how we can look at different nodal axis situations, South Node and North Node, K2 and Rahu, in all the different divisional charts and come to an understanding of it. Now, when it comes to the D10 chart, a lot of times people like to say this chart you look at for a career. And that's only partially true because the D10 chart really is for success with anything. It's the chart that we look at for success. It's the chart that we look at to understand the great fruits in life, how we accomplish those, what holds us back. And of course, if you go in and you look at the nodal axis in the D10, you'll understand the karmic patterns around success. Like this individual, for instance, would have K2 in Gemini. This individual is fictional, by the way. I just created it. You can create humans in astrology. Whoa. But anyway, so K2 in Gemini would show that this person's pattern around success is more than likely based upon 
preconceived ideas of how things work and how things work and how to follow those particular rules, right? This K2 is in also uh, a Kubera de Shamsha. Kubera de Shamshas are about building upon what one already has. So this person's patterns are, you have to follow these specific rules in order to become financially successful, perhaps. Or if you want to build your success, you have to follow these specific rules. But because of that, the person probably negates a lot of what they truly feel or what they truly want right? So Rahu's job is to show them that the true wealth through Rahu's placement in Punarvasu and in Akubara to Shamsha is by tuning into your purpose and what you really believe in, right? I'm just going to show you a brief connection with these things. It's so much more vast than these. And if you're wondering what these uh, Kubera things are over here, these are called the Varga deities. Every Varga chart has them. Okay, so let's take a look at the D2 chart for the person. And we'll be able to see the person's patterns around wealth. This person's patterns around wealth, well, first of all, we have Ketu and Rahu and what are called Indu uh, Horas. Indu Horas on one level are about being receptive, allowing things to flow to you, and about using one's resources to take care of those things and people that are very dear to you. So with K2 in Capricorn for the person, the person likely keeps, well, to a certain degree, a tight-fisted degree of control over keeping things structured in a way that they feel is going to keep the wolf from knocking at the door and keeping financial difficulty from happening. Because K2 is in the six here, the person will have a tendency to think this has to happen with struggle. I have to always struggle for these things. And because of K2's position in Porva Ashada Nakshatra, at the same time, they likely get a little bit invigorated by that battle. But one part of them through the Hindu side of it wants to allow things to just come to them so that they can take care of those people that they believe in, rather than having to focus on it so hard. So Rahu in Cancer will teach them, you have to adapt. You have to be emotionally flexible. You can't keep a rigid set of structure in place in your life. You have to allow for a little bit of fluidity if you really want to establish that flow. And it will likely do so by bringing some difficult experiences into the person's life so that they're forced to let go and so that they can have freedom from that particular cycle. I'm just going to show you a brief example of each of these. So here in the D4 chart, we have Ketu and Rahu in what are called Sananda Chaturtamshas. Okay, Sananda Chaturtamshas. Sananda Chaturtamshas are about those things and those situations in which we feel most fortunate because the D4 chart, Chaturtamsha, is about fortune and those things that we find the greatest bliss in. In short, finding bliss with your fortune. Okay, so we can see this person's, um, in this person's chart, they have K2 and Aries. So again, that's going to cause them to be impulsive. They're going to act first, think about it later. In addition to that, it's likely going to set them up in situations where, again, they're always expecting the struggle in the situation. They feel they have to maybe compete with other people in order to, to establish a good degree of stability. Um, they maybe doubt their own worth and their own value, doubt that they can do those things that they really believe in and that they perhaps have to, well, maybe be a little bit superficial in their approach in order to create a level of uh, financial stability in their life. Rahu in Libra is going to teach them sometimes when you act too quickly, you're not thinking of the other people or the situations in your life, and it becomes a little bit, well, for lack of a better way to put it, inconsiderate. 
inconsiderate of situations and inconsiderate of people in this person's chart, most especially their associates. So it's going to teach them, hey, can you be a little bit easygoing, especially in your interactions with your associates? And with the Sananda Chattertamshas, it's going, you need to find pleasure and joy and happiness in these things. Find joy in connection rather than just joy in fighting for your purpose, right? It's the joy of going about it rather than the joy of fighting it, right? It's the joy of the people, the experiences, the situations that you meet along the way rather than just what you have, okay? Because we can find fortune in many different things. So we just took a look briefly at this person's karmic patterns around success, purpose, and prosperity. When I do this in a consultation with you, it's much deeper than this. We spend an entire hour on the success karma, an entire hour on the uh, prosperity karma, an entire hour on your gifts, an entire hour on how to organize your path ahead. It's a four consultation approach. It's the success, purpose, and prosperity plan. And it is only $333. If you schedule soon, plus you're going to get two years of Easy Astrology Society, which is my online Vedic astrology learning community, where you can learn all of these techniques. That's going to do it. Thanks a lot for watching today. And please do take the very best care of yourself. Bye now.